Harry. All right, all right, all right, all right. I can hear you. Can you hear me? I can hear you. All right. I can hear Rush playing, so I'm happy. Oh, that's awesome, right? <laughs> Good stuff. All right, Alexa, stop. Don't get any ideas, Misty. Misty. <laughs> she I love that dog. Just a few minutes in, she'll start going. Ooh, ooh, why aren't you paying attention to me? Ooh. So yeah, uh, that's anyway. okay. Our uh, our uh, my wife has a uh, really bad Amazon habit. So um, <laughs> and every day around three or four o'clock, our either FedEx or UPS guy purposely bangs on the door and rings the bell to get our two dogs a little crazy. So. <laughs> <laughs> so I've gotten quite oh, used man. to uh, disruptions. Yeah. Well, uh, Jen is running a little late, so I just I, I thought I can uh, ask you a few questions. She's we've got uh, apparently there's some news coming out of Anheuser Bush. I think just got cleared by the Justice Department to complete their CBA deal, CBA. which is not not a huge Finally. not a huge surprise, but still, right. you know. But uh, so, what are you drinking there? Is that a is that flight? I don't know if this was a one beer, two beer, or three beer uh, thing. But, uh, <laughs> back up here is our golden pilsner, and I'm starting with our flight. But actually, when I got the invitation uh, from you for Zoom, I didn't look closely enough that it said three central. So I started drinking at three o'clock Eastern. So, <laughs> so, so I'm already a couple ahead of you. Okay, good. Good. It's one of those weeks, though, that it's, uh, it's nice to let go of some steam here. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, that's... Uh... What a week, what you a know, week. and I got to say, like, um, you know, I'd, off and on, I'd heard that maybe this was in the works or, but I, it kind of took me by surprise and, uh, you know, um, especially how methodical and conservative Dick is. And I mean, well, I guess that's probably why it took 15 years to get the deal done. But um, so, um, so tell me like, how, uh, how do you think the two cultures are, are going to uh, mesh? You, yeah, I mean, you, listen, this is, so first of all, I'm with Pat Pakutas, who's the VP of strategic planning or something like that at Yingling. Something like that. Some, but some, I mean, you've been, title from there Yingling. you go. Yes. <laughs> and you, listen, you've been in the beer business for forever. I mean, the early nineties as have, have I, and, and you've been, I think you started maybe at Miller. I did. And, I did. And, but quickly, uh, quickly moved to, but you've been at Yingling forever and you've, kind of moved up and up and in June you got pr promoted congratulations by the way I was happy to see that and so you know the culture almost better than uh, anybody over there and uh, so how do you think that's going to work yeah I think you know that's always the mystery I, I think as we look at this though um, you know they're they've been very um, when I say they Gavin and uh, Peter Coors and, talk, and talking to Dick and Jen and Wendy, they've been very sensitive to the, the culture and the independence and the independent streak that the family has. So um, I, I think they view this as, hey, we need to kind of bring our culture into this JV. So from a, you know, retail facing standpoint, um, it, it needs to be sold with the same passion that, that our people, you know, kind of sell our brands with. So, um, but Hey, we're, we're not going into this thinking we have all the answers. I mean, they're a, you know, top five, top, top six brewery in the world. Um, we're, we're going to learn a lot from them. I think in, especially in terms of process and, um, you know, more efficient ways of doing things. And so we're, we're pretty excited about that, but, you know, I've had a lot of, connections with their team over the last several months as we look as it looked like this deal was going to happen and they've been nothing but respectful and and um you know re really uh, embracing us as as a you know new partner yeah and you know it, you said you know improving processes but were you still like uh mail paychecks with a stamp and, and it's like <laughs> it's, funny, it's funny you say that because so I did 10 years. I actually did 10 years with Miller Brewing Company, uh, you know, in the Philip Morris days. And I just did maybe, I don't know, I, I left at the end of 2003. So SAB had maybe been in there a year or two at that point. And um, so I came to Yingling and it was two, two, you know, things that I had to get used to. One, 
we got paid every week, which, you know, I think it, when I left Miller, it was like the 15th and the 30th type thing. Yeah. Um, and two, it came via, a, you know, a stamp and, a, and an envelope. <laughs> uh, and that lasted for quite a while. In fact, we, pra- I was, so I've been with Yingling now almost 17 years. Uh, December will be 17 years. And I want to say at least the first five or six years, we were, we were still receiving our paychecks. And then, and then we went direct deposit for our paychecks, but then our expense checks were still mailed to us as opposed to direct deposit. So yeah, it took a while for sure. And I think, you know, I think Dick really and the family, they took, he, he took a lot of pride on Fridays handing out those envelopes, you know, his dad, and that's what he saw his dad do and handing those envelopes, you know, with the paycheck out to the workers. And, um, you know, there's, it's just something real, uh, Americana about it. It was, it was cool, but after a while, I much appreciated not having to go to the bank. (laughs) I mean, I mean, I did the same thing when I, you know, for the first five years, I hand wrote the paychecks. So that's how backwards I was. Didn't even print it out. I had to write each one. I mean, there's only three, you know, (laughs) right, right. Me and Megan and some, uh, one other person. So, but yeah, I always think that's funny. So that's kind of anecdotal that you kind of hear that, that, that uh, Yingling still mails their paychecks. Or yeah, it, it took a while. <laughs> and the, yeah, the other anecdotal is that it's hard to keep Dick off the forklifts. You know, it's like we have people for that, Dick. You can, uh, you know. <laughs> so. he, we were talking about that this week. I, I want to say when he started working for his dad before he left, he operated distributor for about 12 or 13 years yeah. um, in Pennsylvania. So, but prior to that, he worked at the brewery. And I want to say, when they first got forklifts, he was there. So he learned when, like when these things, when the brewery first purchased their first forklift. So he's been riding a forklift for probably, you know, 50, 40, 50, I, I don't know when they came out, but he, that, and he still enjoys it. He'll, yeah. you know, he'll come in at night, you know, and help to get, especially in the summer on busy nights, he'll help them load trucks for a couple of hours. And it's yeah. just, I think it's a nice release for him. That's great. Yeah, such, a, cool. such a great guy. Uh, haven't talked to him in quite a while, but uh, but uh, what a she what a legend! You come visit him in Pottsville, you'd get a kick out of it. It's really, yeah, it's, it's a I would. You know, I've never been to. I actually never been to the brewery in Pottsville. I I was scheduled to come at some point, but I, a few years ago. But I I I don't know if I'm, I'm always breaking my ankles and shit like that. Yeah. And, <laughs> you know, there's always some something wrong with me, but. Uh, but uh, no, that's cool. And so, you know, you guys, uh, you know, I, I so, the, so the way I describe the deal is, and this is my sense of the deal. I, I'm you know, obviously, you know, I'm not on the inside at all, but I sense that maybe, you know, Miller, Miller probably wanted to buy the brewery, right? That would be their choice. And then Yingling's choice would be, why don't you just brew the beer for us? And, you know, and then they, so really kind of they both had a little compromise and this is kind of in the middle where they can both uh, enjoy the upside. It's not just a contract brewing arrangement. And, and yet uh, you guys also get some uh, chain support, national chain support, which, you know, you can, you can lever, uh, not that you don't have chain, you know, you obviously have a chain department, but just a larger one now. And so, um, so when you bring it together, I, you have this kind of board of, of, of have y'all announced who's on the board? I can't recall. I'm, I'm a, yeah, we have actually. It's, who, uh, who are the Molson Coors side? It's Gavin, uh, it's David Coors and Jeff Molson. And then on the, the three Yingling appointees are Jennifer Yingling, Wendy Yingling, who's the chair. Mm-hmm. And then uh, a family advisor consultant for them uh, named Mark Pulaski. Okay. Sorry. Um, but I, I think your synopsis is pretty good. I think initially uh, Dick started talking to Norman about contract production and Norman, you know, wasn't really interested in that. And, you know, it's, <laughs> here we are decade plus later and uh, this is what it's kind of evolved to. Uh, I do need to correct you though. I, their national accounts people, I don't believe will be able to get very involved and that's uh, more separations that have to be created because uh, technically we're in 20, soon to be 25 states, we'll, we'll, we're, we're competitors. So it'll be our chain people that we, and we've you know really built our chain team out over the years. But if it's an account that we're currently calling on, so i.e. Walmart, Kroger, 7-Eleven, 
um, you know, Sam's Club, Target, things like that. It'll just be our people calling on those for the JV. Uh -huh. uh, if it's a uh, account that is new to a state that we go into um, and there, we don't have coverage on it, then JV would have personnel within that structure that will make those calls. Hey, Jen. Hey, so. sorry I'm late. Yeah. Breaking news. That's okay. Yeah, I heard. That's pretty exciting. Yeah. Yeah. Or maybe not. <laughs> well, <laughs> well uh, uh, good job, Jen, on turning that around so quickly. Um, so I was like, damn it, why on a Friday? Pat, do us a favor. Don't break any news on any Fridays, damn it. At three we try not to. <laughs> that, that's, that's AB's move, man. They always, yeah. they always do that. Um, yeah. Well, we were just talking about uh, – about the chain, how the chain thing's going to work, and and that makes sense. I mean, you already have relationships with most of the of the chains, although you know maybe there's some chains out west that you don't have uh, any relationship with at all that they can help you with. But um, yeah, I think they can help us with it. They, you know, the the separation that needs to happen just for antitrust issues yeah. is, is they can make introductions, but they can't really be making calls on behalf of the JV because of the competition that exists in on the East coast. I got you. So, uh, so on the East coast, it's just business as usual, really nothing much changing at all. Um, and then, you know, uh, as you expand westward and, you know, to me, uh, you, uh, to me, you can draw a line from Chicago to Texas and that's kind of be where you're going first. And so, you know, uh, Michigan to Texas, I, 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 Illinois, Michigan, Texas, those are, that makes sense to me. But then plus Miller Coors has breweries in, in that area. All up, yeah. So that makes sense to me. Cause I know you're not really talking about which states you're going to open first, but how, what can you honestly, tell me? Honestly, I don't know that it's really totally been decided because the board really has to, I don't know that they've even really officially had a board meeting. I think they've all talked, but I don't know that there's been like an official meeting. So we're still waiting for some of that direction that'll come out of them. But I, yeah, I, I think, I think you can just look at our map that Jen, I, the map I sent you and it's yeah. pretty clear contiguously. There's some really big States that we haven't opened yet that would, uh, you know, that would work well and close to where they have breweries. Right. And, and uh, so can you, can you give us like a, a little, uh, well, you know, like you said, they haven't met yet. So we really might not know. Oh, but they haven't even what, met. Wow. So what oh, about the, the, met. the, the board. board? Right. So, I mean, you know, the, the timeline, I mean, are we looking at open all 50 states in the next year or two years or, you know, is it slower or faster than that, you think, in your opinion? Yeah, no, it's, I mean, it's been made pretty clear that this will be a, you know, slow, methodical build and let's get it right. And let's, you know, let's make sure we're, 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 you know, doing the right things for the portfolio and, the, the, you know, the tastes match up and all the things that you have to do to build an organization that, that can, it's essentially a new supplier, really, even though it's going to be like an extension of, of DG Yingling and Son, it's really from a, contractual standpoint and, and you know entering new states and and you know from that perspective it's really the creation of, of another supplier so I, I just don't knowing how we've always worked um i just don't see that they're to their big race across the country I, I think as business dictates and um as it makes sense and you know as the board decides to to go you know further uh, it'll happen but I, no i from all everything I've been told and everything that was written was the same thing I've been told is that this will be very similar to how Yingling's done it in the past, maybe not 190 years to go, 22 states, but, uh, <laughs> but it'll be, it'll be, you know, at a, at a measured pace. Yeah. Well, Jen, why don't you, uh, since you, I, yeah. I was just kind of hogging the airtime over here. So I know, <laughs> I know you, I know you like to see yourself on the screen. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I don't know what you've asked yet, but um, I, I have a couple questions. Um, okay, so do do you we know who's on the board yet exactly? Yes, so, he, we we've already we have already been through that, Jen. Yes. Um, so some big hitters. Yeah, some big hitters. 
Um, I'm kind of wondering about the cultural blend, right? Because you well, we like talked about that too. Cool. Let me right. let me tell you where let me tell you where we are on these questions that you presented to me. Um, <laughs> I think uh, we're on number four, which is okay. is there strong demand? Yeah. So. Okay. Yeah, that was my next one. So obviously, there was a time where regional. Yeah, I don't know if you guys still identify with the craft moniker or not. You're obviously somewhere in between craft and like, you know. Well, they are craft. Yeah. I mean, by definition. In some ways, they're very domestic too, right? But anyway, is there still as great a demand for a brand like Yingling to go national as there may have been, you know, five years ago? Yeah, I, I think that's the, you know, we can only judge by the, the requests that we get. And, and to answer your question, yes, Charlie, uh, uh, Harry, technically they do consider us craft a BA, but for a lot of years they didn't consider right. us no. craft. So we never really get hung up on it. We just kind of do what we've always done and products that we've always made. And it, it's, you know, w whether it's Bob Peace or Charlie Papazian who's running the BA, that's their decision whether or not they want to consider us craft. But Jen, to answer your question, you know, I think consumer tastes have changed dramatically, right? Starting several years ago with, you know, really hoppy style beers, you know, we make a very mainstream, sweeter right. uh, tasting lager. And now you got the other uh, end of the spectrum, which is, you know, these really ultra light and, you know, refreshing seltzer type products. So, so I do think in some respects, we've got our work cut out for us. We've got to, you know, we have to continue to expand the line uh, of, of our portfolio. And, you know, that's not been something that's been a core right. uh, goal of ours or a core competency really is innovation. So that's one area that I think they may really help us and support us they've got a lot of incredible technology at their breweries and a lot of really really smart people running those breweries so i think we're excited to see you know potentially what we could do and what we could bring learnings we could bring bring back to um to expand the yingling line over time but you know we're, we've done some innovating i mean to to two of the beers right here you know like, products that have been out in the last three years and this by the is way the Pat's like four beers in already. <laughs> he, he, he start this. He thought it started at two. So. <laughs> well, it's four over there, right? Yeah. Right. I got when I saw three. I didn't look closely enough that it was three central. So I have had all my beers here. I said, "Well, I'm gonna start drinking." All. <laughs> I got an hour to wait. I might as well <laughs> lather up a little. <laughs> lather up. Um. But yeah, yeah so, so these two beers have done pretty well. I mean, Golden Pilsner is well over a million cases for us. Flight is, um, you know, we released that right as the pandemic hit. I mean, <laughs> couldn't have picked a worse time, but we're on plan. We'll, we're going to do, you know, seven, 800,000 cases in, in eight, eight months. Yeah, eight and a half months. Um, and we just see tremendous upside for that that brand. And that's, you know, it's an upscale light. It's got all the stats, but we feel that the, the advantage with 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 our version is that it's 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 got a lot of taste. It it really does. And look forward to, to getting some out to you and you guys tell us what you think. Well and and do you have any indication of how much it cannibalizes lager or um, I mean, it's kind of hard to tell, really. It's I mean, very little. So, so we've oh, been tracking cool. it. Yeah, we're seeing high consumer repeat purchase rates. I don't know that I want to share the exact number, but it's it's significantly higher than some of the um, really highly publicized seltzers that have been released this year uh, in terms of repeat purchase rates. So we're really excited about that. And it's interacting with... Um, less than 30% from, from within our portfolio. So basically two thirds plus are, are coming from outside our portfolio and a lot are trading up from, from lower segment light beers. So, no. so it's, it's really exciting for us to see that. Cool. What about the rest of the portfolio? I mean, I know you guys are up uh, a little bit in scans year to date, but I know in your core, I think you had pretty pretty good draft business, which took a hit during COVID. So you guys, I mean, did, were you able to pivot to 12 packs? Any any chance for a growth year? We're not going to grow, no. But we're, I mean, when you think about it, we do almost just under 
30% of our business in the on-premise. So we literally lost in a span of three or four days in mid-March going into St. Patrick's Day. We, you know, the bottom dropped out of 30% of our business. So our on-premise is running down high 40s for the year. Uh, so that goes, you know, from January through August. Uh, so that's pretty tough when you have 30% of your business running down close to 50%. But our, our um, you know, our core business is doing well off-premise. So our shipment number right now is currently running down mid-singles. Uh, depletion's just slightly worse than that. But, um, you know, we're, we're, our biggest challenge that we have as a company is we have not, as we've expanded into really convenience store heavy states, we don't have a brand that, that translates well to the convenience store consumer. So we, we you know, we lack a huge light beer. Uh, we, we lack a kind of a, you know, FMB or seltzer type. We, we lack a big, um, you know, higher ABV product that in a single serve uh, pack type. So, so I, I would think next year you, you'll see us dabble in what we think will a, a, a new innovation that will do very well in C stores. I, I can't really say much more than that right now. Um, but we're we have to fix that because we yeah. our numbers in in um, large format in the last 26 weeks we're running up mid teens in in food and multi outlet. When you bring in the C store business, multi outlet plus C store, our business drops to low single digit, you know, mid single digit growth. So um, we just have a real opportunity and convenience that Lager, Light Lager, Golden Pilsner, uh, to this point, flight hasn't really delivered on. So, so we have we have our work cut out for us in convenience. Right. I'm sure. Uh, I'm thinking thinking Eagles for an FNB. <laughs> Scream an eagle, although AB might come after you for that. <laughs> I, I, I can't comment. <laughs> Pretty anyway. smart girl, though. I don't know who you're talking to. But. Scream an eagle, man. I like that, Jen. You know what you ought to do? You know what you ought to do, Not Jen? Not screaming, but is, it's, uh, very, it's similar. You, you, ought to go, uh, you ought to go run to the patent office and just like this. That way you can just, uh, you know, extort them for the. Oh, for I the, thought you were going to tell me consult. <laughs> well screaming eagle is one that we looked at really hard and unfortunately <laughs> there is a there is a wine uh in california that's like some ridiculously high-end wine that um it, it we wouldn't get past the trademark so wow. yeah, yeah i i i i actually have heard of that wine screaming eagle yeah i want to say it's like a couple thousand dollars a bottle yeah no, I, I'm, not, I'm not i'm not saying i drank it <laughs> Maybe you did. Unless I was with, uh, you know, one of my rich beer distributor friends. Exactly. <laughs> okay. um, yeah, well, I'm curious more about your new role too, Pat, right? Because you were sales and marketing chief for what, six years? Yeah, yeah, 2014, 20, uh, yeah. And now mm -hmm. in your new role as, let's, it's very strategic, ah, VP of strategic planning and development, what exactly will you be focusing on? So uh, a lot of what we're focused on is, is around a kind of an enterprise-wide plan. So, um, you know, bringing operations more into, uh, which is tough because that's the side of the business that Dick really holds on to tight. So, but just aligning better our, our sales and marketing plan with, with our operations and kind of break, breaking down some of those silos. Um, but, you know, things like network strategies, uh, the JV, we have a partner, external partner uh, it, with Hershey's that we, we're doing a collaboration with them, kind of owning those partnerships and then really kind of exploring what else we can do as a, as a portfolio, uh, as a business, what, what, you know, how far can we extend beyond what we're doing today uh, and do it efficiently, do it in line with with what our, you know, core values and, and you know, what's important to, to the family. So, um, it's, it's definitely a different role. Um, you know, I'm a sales guy at heart. I love to sell. Um, and so this is challenging me in different ways that, you know, frankly, I, um, 
you know, at my age, I, I probably needed a, a kick in the pants and to take some things on differently and to think differently. So it's, it's pretty exciting. I, I've been involved a lot the last six to eight months or so in trying to get this, this deal across the goal line. Um, and, um, you know, now the real work starts. It's, it was a race to the goal line. And now the real work is, is for us to support that business because we have kind of a really, it's really a unique model where both companies are bringing services to support this new business and tapping into, you know, the shared services to, to make this a business that can scale up pretty quickly is, is going to be the challenge. And, you know, Harry and I talked about it earlier. The culture piece is, is definitely something that we want to lean in on. You know, we think that our culture is, is more um, able to understand and sell our beers out of the gate. So the folks that end up getting hired to work in and run the JV, we really want to bathe them in the England culture. And so that hopefully they have as much passion selling our brands that, that our people do. And, and, uh, because that's ultimately what it's all about, right? You have to really feel a passion for the brand you're selling. Cool, cool. Yeah, yeah. Did, um, I guess, did COVID delay the announcement at all or? Um, not really. Um, you know, it's been such a, um, it's been an on again, off again, you know, for many, many years, really. Um, and it looked like towards the end of last year, we were progressing and then Gavin took, Gavin was, has been great through this whole thing, by the way, he's been very respectful of, of, you know, the, the independent streak and just the, the culture that the Yinglings have. And at the end of last year, it looked like it was going to get done. And it was kind of a race to, to see if we could maybe announce something early 2020. Uh, then he took his new role. So he was a little bit distracted and then, you know, of course, they had the tragedy at the Milwaukee Brewery, and that got him further distracted, and then COVID hit. Mm -hmm. So um, I think it was probably like mid-May or early May when we really started to get back on track. And, um, you know, it's it's just between now and then, it was just literally just dotting I's and crossing T's and and kind of, you know, figuring out what, what the next year would look like. Because there is about a you know, seven to 10 month ramp up that needs to happen now. Uh, so once the exact brewery is identified that we're going to invest in, um, there's a, you know, a significant for us, the rounding error on the Molson core side, but there's several million dollars in investment that has to happen in CapEx at those, at w whatever brewery is identified. Um, and that will take, you know, just a few months and then you have to really get into the trial brew process to make sure that we're able to match, you know, the flavor profiles and, and then you gotta, you gotta build a team, right? You have to build the sales team and, and capabilities within the JV to, to then launch these brands. So it's, you know, I'm, I'm guessing it'll be mid next summer, you know, or late next summer before, you know, we're, we're, we're really in, into new, new markets. Yeah. Well, I have to say, I see, I see it now. I do, but it, you know, if somebody had asked me, you know, last week, there's going to be giant news coming down the pike. Tours, <laughs> I would never have come up with Yingling. Harry, would you have, would you have come up with Yingling? Well, I mean, I, I would have I, like, I, I would have a few years ago, but I, like I told Pat earlier, it did catch me by surprise because I yeah. haven't thought about it in a long time. You know, I would have thought. Uh, honestly, I thought I would have thought like Heineken USA would, you yeah. know, uh, but uh, Jen uh, d dared me to do this. I've been having stomach issues. So. <laughs> oh my oh. God. That's awesome. Glad you had those beers, Pat. <laughs> That's awesome. Listen, I tell I have four sons, so I, there you go. there's nothing that one that is called Brown Mosquito. <laughs> It's I, I have part. to find that app. <laughs> I, I I did it in an elevator about six months ago, and I it was everybody just went. Oh, it's a crowded elevator, and I was like, guys, that's just an app. Sorry, I didn't. Why did you have to ruin it? You should have just let. I know. You're all of it, man. <laughs> I can't do that. I just can't. It's so uh, embarrassing. That's great. But I'm I'm surprised that you guys were surprised because <laughs> Harry 
for in his annual New Year's predictions for a few years predicted that Yingling was going to partner up with somebody and he he, he it never came true so I think he just gave up on it after a while. I know the one year I didn't predict it it comes true. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's I, it. I haven't looked at my prediction I bet they're all just completely wrong because of COVID you know. Well you I, get a pass this year. Yeah I think so i I, I ought to, uh, Jen, remind me next week. Let's let's go okay. over. Let's we'll That's go back. A great, like, that is a great idea. Like, go back and look at them because I bet they're just uh, terrible. <laughs> yeah, that, it, it, you get a pass this year, brother. <laughs> Thanks, man. <laughs> Thanks. And I appreciate I appreciate that you're one of the few people in the industry that likes my personal uh, tweet account. You know, oh, I love it. So, this is very so, entertaining, man. Yeah. <laughs> it's so yeah, it's awesome. Entertaining to me too, Pat, in a very different way. Like, <laughs> it's very how entertaining. How do we still operate as a company? <laughs> well, just, so <laughs> what happened, Pat, was that I was running the corporate account, you know, Beer Biz Daily, uh -huh. Twitter, which, you know, has like 30,000 followers. And, sure. and then, you know, I would make outrageous claims <laughs> like I invented the question mark or, you know, and I'd get us in little bits of trouble here and there. So finally, Jen was like, get your own personal account so that those tweets are your own and then we can just focus on the beer industry on the beer account so that's why we split in two but it's not as fun when you only have 200 followers versus thirty thousand. but <laughs> no i enjoy it and and uh your fiance she she posts great stuff too oh yeah, yeah. yep great. <laughs> Thank goodness for me. She, by the way she's a huge yingling fan that's i the, know uh, and that's when i started following her when, yeah. when you, you took her to South Carolina and she oh, yeah. drank a bunch of yinglings. <laughs> yeah. She goes, I don't think I'm going to like it. Cause I, she, she thought it would taste like Shiner, which is much heavier Bach. And right. no, 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 no. This is a, a sweeter, lighter beer. And, and oh, yeah. She drinks the hell out of it. So That's awesome. We have well, one hopefully customer we'll, in Texas. <laughs> yeah, hopefully, yeah, hopefully we'll be able to get it to her sooner rather than later. Good. All right. Anything else, Jennifer? I, I know. You, I know. Jennifer always has another question. I usually do. I might have to call you guys back up though because I'm spent. So. Yeah. <laughs> so am I. Trust me. Yeah. It's been, bet, been quite a I week. You are, Pat. Did you sleep at all this week or after? What was it? When was it announced? Wednesday or Thursday? I forget. It was announced Tuesday. Oh, so Tuesday. I didn't. I didn't sleep at all Monday night because <laughs> I was so like. So we informed our employees that. Um, like five o'clock on four, four, th between four thirty and six on Monday night, because we, Molson Coors was very careful. Like, hey, they, you can't say anything to anybody before the market closes or until after the market closes. Right. Excuse me. So, so we informed our employees Monday night, and then you know my phone was just blowing up from all our employees, and what's this mean? And you know, explain this to me, blah blah blah. And then Tuesday we met. You know, so Adam Count, and what, I'll tell you what I love about Gavin Hattersley is there's an absolute most normal guy you'll ever meet. I mean, flew commercial into into Harrisburg, drove a car, you know, like an hour up. He drew, he rented the car and drove up. No entourage. It was just him and Adam Collins and Jennifer Martinez, who's in their uh, communications team. Like no entourage, no airs, like as normal as staying the holiday in, like just like, you know, yeah. just as normal as they get for, from a, for a CEO. But then that was, I mean, we met at seven o'clock Tuesday morning, preparing for, you know, the 10 o'clock press conference. And um, it was just a whirlwind of a day. We were out late Tuesday night celebrating and, sure. <laughs> you know, back, back at it early. And then on Wednesday, we we have um, you know we had to do our our a annual national uh, distributor conference virtually, so we were filming some things for that all day Wednesday, and um, and then a third yesterday was like finally the first break we had to catch up on like thousands of yeah. texts and emails and yeah. voicemails so. It was a it was a pretty wild week, and no, Harry, we did not sleep much at all at all. <laughs> what, how's uh, how's good last night, uh, How's Dave Castanelli doing? I haven't uh, seen him in a while. I haven't seen Dave. anybody in a while. Yeah, he was he was. So we we broke up into teams on Tuesday morning and and called some of our big distributors before the announcement came public. Um, so him and I had a list of distributors we had to call. We started calling people at 7 a.m. Eastern 
Um, and then Wendy and Colin Callahan, who's our, our new VP of sales and marketing, they, they had a list of people to call. And then Charlie Trepkos, who's, who's now running sales for us, he had a list of people to call. So we all kind of just divide and conquered. And yeah, so I spent a lot of time with Dave Monday and Tuesday. And then Wednesday, like I said, Wednesday, we, we had stuff to film. We had a film crew in, so we, we had some things to film for our meeting. So it was, we spent a lot of time together. He's doing great. Yeah, he's, uh, you yeah. know, Dave's where I'll be in a couple of years with, you know, empty nester and oh. him and his wife, Joanne, and, you know, they, they really enjoy life. And it's, yeah, uh, yeah it's cool. Oh. Good, good. I'm, uh, I'm an empty nester now as well, but, uh, but I got really. my, I got my dog. Yeah, not really. It's, yeah, That's so a I, fitting door over there. I know. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it really is. Uh, I so uh, Pat, what's the, what's your dog's name that I see wandering around behind you? So I have two. I have two Airedale Terriers. One who's like ten, and and then I have one that's like nine or ten months. And and the one that's ten, uh, his name is Griffy, and that was only because my my son, who's now twenty was a huge Ken Griffey Jr. fan. So he oh my him. God, my, my, my son is 20 also, and he was a huge Ken Griffey. That's hilarious. Yeah. yeah. So, totally. so Griffey's the older one. And then our, our puppy is named Theo. That's who just room. He, he comes in all the time yeah. and he's uh, the old Griffey hates the, I shouldn't say hates him, but he just doesn't want to be bothered, man. And Theo <laughs> just wants to play. Theo is the happiest dog I've ever seen in my life. He oh, literally oh. is never had a bad day never had a bad minute i mean he just is the happiest dog no matter what so we're, we're blessed well, good well um maybe that could be one of your innovations beer for dog i, I saw that bush light came out with a with a and it sold out yeah. like within 10 minutes and it was yeah. like 20 dollars a four pack like maybe I they're on to something yeah, yeah. <laughs> i think they are jim let's get on it all right, I'm the consultant. Apparently, who knows? The wackier the idea today, the better. True. Yeah, I mean, who, who ever thought there'd be a French's mustard beer? You know, <laughs> yeah. that's off the canarchy. I mean, they they figured it out. I heard it tastes pretty good. I don't I've know. never tried it, man. I don't know, uh -huh. but I would try it. So somebody told me it was pretty good, and then uh, Josh Noel, the, yeah, the guy from the Sh right Chicago right. Tribune, he he. So that's two people now that I've heard two <laughs> completely different people. One's more of a hophead than the other. And they both said it was pretty good, like much I, better I, than I, they expected. I trust Josh. I know he's, uh, he's got a sophisticated palate. I, yes, I don't know does. what's good. At my age, I don't know what's good anymore. You know, know. My, my taste buds are charred and just fallen. They've all fallen <laughs> out. You know, I could eat dog food, if, you know. <laughs> But uh, well, listen, Pat, thank you. Uh, I know you're busy, and thank you for taking time out of your Friday afternoon to spend with us. And thank you, uh, Pat. yes, thank you. And unless Jen, you have anything else, I think that's uh, nothing else. Oh yes, right, I good. do. One one thing. I really hope we can have a beer soon, all of us together. Oh uh, come <laughs> yes. on! Yeah, I would love it. I would love it. Yeah, I mean, if you think about it, last time I saw you guys was at your conference in January, and. Seems like years ago. It's yeah, crazy. it really does. It really yeah. that no, that fe that day at the breakers literally feels like it does five years ago. Yeah, yeah it really crazy. really does. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we're <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm fingers crossed that you guys will be able to pull your conference off this year because I look forward to it. It's it's a well, good. Well, we're 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 plugging forward as if nothing's wrong, and we're, we're the one thing that's different is we're gonna you know you can get your money back at, at any time if you if if you don't want to come, you know, if right. comfortable coming or whatever. So, uh, and then, you know, we're going to, our receptions will be outside on the beach distanced. And, uh, and if you don't want to come to the conference room, you can watch it on your TV in your room. So we've we got options. We've got options. I'm, just, I'm, I'm, I'm afraid to go to these conferences because I think I'll be too wild. Costed by a lot of distributors. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I know, yeah. I may not know what to tell them yet. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, the good news is, is that, you know, uh, uh, it's, you know, now you, it's Molson Coors, unless they're, a, 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 unless, a, from what I can see, unless they're complete uh, uh, jackasses, that they'll probably get the brands. I mean, yeah. um, well, there's forward, that. There's also, you know, there's a pretty aggressive 
that we've always required um, because you're, you're earning, you know, pr pretty strong distribution rights. There's a pretty aggressive three-year investment plan and we've yeah. had distributors that just say, you know what, I'm not going to do it. So right. in, in those instances, you know, and, and if, and if the AB guy is willing to step up, you know, absolutely. We, we, we consider that. Mm -hmm. So I, I think, you know, we're, we're obviously there's going to be a heavy lean into, into the Molson cores network. But um, we're, we're not willing to say 100% that we wouldn't, you know, look, look at the other side if it made sense. Right. Okay, good. All right. Well, thanks, man. Have a good week. Thank weekend. you, guys. Have a great weekend. Congratulations. Right. And we'll, you, we'll, we'll talk thanks. soon. Thanks, Harry. We'll see you guys. Right. Thanks.